Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Tuition. In this video, we're going to learn how to create a login page with Carousel. We are going to create this login page with just HTML and CSS. And for the Carousel, we will use Oval Carousel. Now this video is useful for those programmers who want to make a login page without using any library like Bootstrap. If you have any basic understanding of HTML and CSS, then it's easy to create this login page for you. So in this login page, we're going to have a website title, a beautiful carousel and an input text boxes to validate user. If you haven't created any login page yet, then this is going to be the best tutorial for you. So before taking your too much time, let's get started. Now let's get started and create a simple HTML and CSS login page. Now what you want to do, you just need to open an editor, whatever you like. In that editor, just open an empty folder and name that folder tutorial. You can name this folder anything. You just need to open this folder in your favorite editor. I'm going to use here Visual Studio Code Editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code Editor. So in this editor, I have here an empty folder. Now in this folder, I'm going to first make the entry point of this login page. So I'm going to just create here index.html file. And in this file, I'm going to have a simple HTML5 snippet. To create a simple snippet, I'm going to just put exclamation mark here and press enter. So once I press enter, I'm going to have a simple HTML5 snippet and then I'm going to just change this title to login page. And just after that, I'm going to create a new folder right here in the root directory and name this folder CSS. Now in this folder, I'm going to have style.css file, which we are going to create right now. So I'm going to select this CSS folder and create here a new file and name this file style.css. Now the style.css file will represent all the custom styling for the HTML elements. Now just open the index.html file and just link this style.css file to this HTML. So I'm going to just here dot forward slash and just specify the CSS folder and the style.css file. Now I'm going to just add here a command for documentation. So I'm going to just see here custom style and just after that right here. I'm going to select the root directory and create a new folder here and name that folder assets. Now in this folder, I'm going to have few images which we are going to use in this tutorial. So I'm going to just copy few images and put that inside this folder. So I'm going to just copy these images and paste that inside the tutorial folder and inside this asset folder right here. You can see I have these images in this folder, right? Now. In the head section right here, I'm going to link few libraries. So I'm going to first link here a CDN of Font Awesome website. Using the Font Awesome website, we can use different free icons in the project. So I'm going to just open the browser and in the address bar, I'm going to say fontawesome.com. And so using this website, you can access free icons in your application. Now just after that, you just need to sign in and get the CDN. So I'm going to just sign in here. So I'm going to just sign in here because I already have an account. If you don't have an account, just create a new one and sign in. So I'm going to just sign in here because I have an account. So I'm going to just specify my password. Now, once you sign in, you can see here you have your navigation. So just click on it and just click on this kit. From this kit, you can create a new one or use the existing one. So I'm going to use the existing one because I already have this kit here. If you don't, you can create a new one as well. I'm going to use the existing one. So I'm going to click on it and I want to use the CDN. So I'm going to just copy this script tag, right? This one. So I'm going to just click on this copy kit code. And once I copy it, I'm going to just create a comment here and just see here font awesome CDN and just paste that script tag right here to access different icons in this project. Now, just after that, let me just open my finished login page in the browser. So as you can see here in this page, we have two sections. This is the first one and this is the second one. In the first section, we have this heading, the carousel with these dots and also we're going to have this follow section. And in the second section, in the second column right here, I'm going to have your sign up button with this title that I'm going to have here two text boxes and the login button. So I'm going to first complete this first column and then move to the second column. Right, so I'm going to first add this title, this carousel, and this follow section. I'm going to first create here a container. Now, in the body section right here, I'm going to create a simple division tag with the class container. So, to create a division tag, I'm going to just see here dot container 
and when I press tab, I'm going to have here a division tag with the class container. Just after that, in the container, I'm going to have here a panel class. So this division tag is going to represent this rectangle. In this div, in this panel, I'm going to have a row. And in this row, I'm going to have two columns. So I'm going to just create here a division tag with the call class. I just copy this div and paste it here. So as you can see here, I have two columns here. In the first column, I'm going to just put this heading, this carousel and this follows text. So in the first column right here, I'm going to just first specify here a class liquid, which we are going to specify in the style or CSS file. And then in this div, I'm going to just have here a simple H4 heading tag with the text ready go. So this is the simple name of my company. Save the changes. And just after that, I'm going to just start this application in the live server. So I'm going to just right click here and say open with live server. If you are not able to see this option, then make sure you have live server extension installed in the VS Code editor. Now, just start with this H4 heading tag right here, I'm going to have this carousel. So I'm going to just add this carousel. So I'm going to just create here a command for the documentation and name this command oval carousel. And just close this right here. In this command, I'm going to have here a division tag with the class oval carousel. And just after that, I'm also going to add here oval theme to specify default styling to this carousel. Now in this division tag, I have oval items. So I'm going to just create here an image tag. And in the source attribute, I'm going to just specify my asset folder and just specify my first image. So I'm going to select my first image here. Just create my second image. So I'm going to just specify my second carousel item and just select the second image here. Then just after that, I'm going to create here image tag again and just select the asset and select my third image here. Now, if you want, you can specify the alt attribute, but I'm going to leave it as it is. I want to add a class to this image. So I'm going to just specify here login img. I'm going to copy this class and specify the same class for all these three images like this right so i can access these all images using this login img class now just after that just after this division tag and this command right here i'm going to have follow section so i'm going to just create here follow class and in this class i'm going to have here a text follow us now if you open your website you can see we have this type of result now as you can see here i haven't imported any icons so i just want to import icons so to import icons you just need to add i element so i'm going to just add here i element because i want to add icon right here and to this i element i'm going to specify a class and using this class i'm going to import icon in this html file so i'm going to just specify here fast fa drafting compass now, if you don't know how to import icons in your website, just open the font awesome website and click on these icons. Now, from this page, you can find the free and premium icons. Now, you just need to select your favorite icon from this icon. So, just say I select this ambulance icon. When I click on this icon, this is going to open a new page of the ambulance icon. You can see you have this i tag here. So, just copy this i tag and paste it in your HTML file to use this icon. I already linked this scripting tag here to access the font awesome classes. So I use this class to import this icon right here. You can see here. Now just after that, I'm going to just add here a Facebook icon. So I'm going to just add here i tag. And in the class, I'm going to just say here fab fa facebook f. So this is going to import Facebook icon from the font awesome website. So this is going to display the Facebook icon on my login page right here as you can see here now just after that i'm also going to have here twitter icon so i'm going to just add i tag with the class fab fa twitter so once i save it you can see i have here a twitter icon as well now the first column is completed let's add a styling to this application now if you take a look at this html page then it looks horrible right now i just want to add style to this html page so i'm going to just open my editor and just open this style.css file which we already linked to this index.html file now in this file before i move on i'm going to just create here a command import fonts from 
Google font. Now what I want, I want to import fonts from the Google font website, which we are going to use to this login page. So I'm going to just open my browser and just after that right here, I'm going to say Google font and just click on this font.google.com website and I just want to select my favorite font here. So I'm going to just using here lobster, this font, so I'm going to just click on this select this font and I also want to use this font. So I'm going to just select that font as well and just after that, open the selected font, click on this import statement and just copy this import statement and paste it inside this style.css file. So now you can use these fonts in your login page. Now just after that, I'm going to select the HTML and the body and specify here height. So I'm going to just specify here 100% height and then I will just say here overflow hidden and I want to specify here a gradient color to my background. So I'm going to first specify the fallback value. So I'm going to just say here background and add here a color using the hex value and just after that i'm going to just see here background and specify a liner gradient and i want to specify this liner gradient to the right side from the left to the right and just specify a color i'm going to specify here a color in the hex value and just specify the second color here and just after that i'm going to specify a second color like this so here are the changes once I open my website, I have this gradient color in the background. I don't want this ruler in this website, so I'm going to just remove it using this overflow property. Now, just after that, I want to create a few variables in this login page. So I'm going to just create here a command variables. And to create a variable, you need to first select the global class, either a body or the root selector. So I'm going to just see here root. And in the root selector, I'm going to create a few variables. So to create variables, it's very simple. Just specify double dash, specify the variable name. So I'm going to just see here primary gradient and just specify a value to this variable. So I'm going to just specify here liner gradient to this variable. So I'm going to just specify here to right and specify my hex color here. Just after that, I'm going to create my second gradient color mango gradient and specify a value this one the liner gradient just copy this value and specify here so now I can remove this value from here and just specify here var function and just specify here hyphen hyphen mango gradient so now you don't need to specify this value anywhere in your CSS file you just need to specify your variable name so the changes and it's going to specify this mango gradient to the background now I'm going to just create a few variables here. I'm going to create here text color and just specify here a color. So I'm going to just quickly create a few variables here. Now as you can see here, I have few variables here. I have here text color and I also going to have here a shadow color and the border color. Now let's start styling to this HTML template. Now let's add some style to this HTML template. So I'm going to just first select a container. So I'm going to just see here container and just specify here a display property flex. And just after that, I want to center all the content. So I'm going to just see here justify content center and align items center. So this will center all the content horizontally and vertically. Just after that, I want to specify here a height 98% and also I want to specify max height 16 pixel save the changes and just after that i'm going to select my container again and select panel and to this panel i'm going to specify width 60 percent and height is going to be 72 percent and i also want to specify here a box shadow to this panel so i'm going to just specify here a box shadow and I'm going to use the primary shadow variable here. So I'm going to just see here primary gradient like this. I'm going to select here a row. So I'm going to just see here row. And I want to just specify here a display property to this row. So I'm going to just see here display grid. So I'm going to just select this row. And just specify display grid to this row. And I want to create two columns. So I'm going to just see here grid template columns and I want to create two columns so I just want to specify first column width. 
So I'm going to see here 65% and 35%. So I want to specify 65% for the first column and 35% for the second column. Then I'm going to just specify height here 100% and the background color which is going to be this one. Save the changes. Now let me just expand this window. Now just after that what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select the liquid class. So I'm going to just say here liquid and specify a background color to the first column. So as you can see we specify this liquid class to the first column. So I'm going to just specify here background URL and I want to specify here an image. So I'm going to select my asset folder and select the image here. So I'm going to select this wave PNG image and specify background size, cover and background repeat, no repeat. Save the changes and as you can see we have this image here. Now I just wanted to first remove these image tags. So you can understand better so I'm going to just comment here to this image tags and save it now just after that I'm going to select the liquid class and select the h4 heading tag this one and to this h4 heading tag I'm going to just say text align left and some padding so I'm going to say padding 0 and 2 rem and specify color white smoke along with that I'm going to specify font family this one save the changes oops I need to check the spelling of this yeah right here save the changes now as you can see the font family is applied to this h4 heading tag now just after that I just want to add here oval carousel like this to create this carousel we need to first link the CDN of the oval carousel so I'm going to just open a new tab and type here oval carousel and from this website oval carousel 2.github you can get your oval carousel right now from this website i'm going to just get the old carousel cdn you can get the information of the old carousel from the documentation and you can understand how to install this old carousel in your website so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use cdn to import this carousel to my login page so i'm going to just open my new tab and right here you just need to say here oval carousel to cdn and just after that from the cdnjs.com you can get the cdn of this oval carousel so i'm going to link the minified version of oval carousel css file so i'm going to just click on this copy link tag like this and i'm going to paste this link in the header section of the index.html file so i'm going to just create here command oval carousel and paste that link here save the changes and just after that make sure you link the theme CSS as well so I'm going to just copy this oval theme default minified version of this CSS file and specify that just after this link tag right here and the last we need to link the JS file as well so I'm going to just copy this oval carousel mean.js file like this and specify that before the closing body tag right here and the last we also need to link jquery files to work with oval carousel so i'm going to just open a new tab and just say here jquery cdn i'm going to just click on this code.jquery.com and from here you just need to right click on this minified version and just select copy link address create here a script tag and in the source attribute just paste that copy link address like this and now you can use jquery in your application now i'm going to just close these tabs because this is not needed now just after the script tag i'm going to create here my own custom script and in this script i'm going to make this carousel so i'm going to just get rid of this command save the changes i want to create a carousel here i'm going to just add here a script tag and in this script I'm going to first select the jQuery object, specify document here, document.vary and in this vary function, I'm going to specify a handler. So I'm going to say here function and to this function, I'm going to specify the body of this function. Now this function is execute when the document is ready. Now in this function, I'm going to just select my oval carousel. So I'm going to call the jQuery object. Then I'm going to say oval 
carousel I just call the old carousel method so I'm going to just say here oval carousel and to this method I'm going to specify parameter type object and just say here loop true then I'm going to say auto play I want to auto play this carousel so I'm going to just say here true then I'm going to say here auto play timeout 2000 it means 2 second and I'm going to say here auto play over pause and I'm going to say here true I want only one item at the time so I'm going to say here items 1 save the changes as you can see I have my carousel here right Now, what I want, I want to make some changes in this carousel and add some style to it. So, I'm going to just open my style.css file. And in this style, I'm going to add some style to this carousel. Now, in the style.css file, I'm going to just select first oval carousel. So, I'm going to just select oval carousel class. And specify width 100%. I'm going to just specify here a height 320 pixel. And specify here a max height. It's going to be 330 pixel. Just after that, I want to select all these images. So I'm going to first select the oval carousel, then the oval items, and select the login IMG class. And to this class, I'm going to specify float, right? And just after that, I'm going to specify here width 400 pixel. Then I'm going to specify here height. 300 pixel and specify background repeat no repeat and background size cover and padding right 3 rem so as you can see you have your carousel here just out of that i want to specify some style to these dots so i'm going to select this dot using oval dots class and specify position fix padding 3 rem and 1.2 rem then specify display property flex and specify important keyword here to override the default property and specify flex direction columns so once you save it you can see you have your dots here and I want to specify here a transform property. So I'm going to say here transform translate by and want to display these icons right here. So I'm going to just specify here minus 240 pixel. Save the changes. So this is going to display these icons right here in the column direction. Now just after that, I'm going to select these column buttons. So I'm going to say here all dots button and then specify border radius 5 rem and margin 0.3 rem and 0 so this is going to add some border radius and some margin to these dots now just out of that i'm going to select these dots so i'm going to select here oval dots select the button and select the span tag to select these dots and just specify a background I call the text color here so I'm gonna call here text color and specify important keyword to override the default property as well as I'm gonna specify here margin 0 rem 0.6 rem and specify the important keyword here so the changes it's going to specify this text color to this span tags now just after that I'm gonna select the old dots again and select the active class and to the active dots, I want to specify border, one pixel, solid, and specify hex value here, as well as the important keyword. So this will specify border to the active dots. Now just after that, I'm going to select the oval dots again, select the active dot, and select the span tag, and specify background. Specify the color with the important keyword and specify margin here 
0.3 RAM, 0.5 RAM, and I will add here important keyboard. Save the changes. Now, as you can see, you have this type of result. So this is going to specify border to the active dot as well as change the color of the active dots. Now, just after that, I'm going to select this follows text. So I'm going to select this follow class, this one. So I'm going to say here follow and I want to specify first padding 0 and 1.4 RAM. Then I'm going to specify padding top 1.4 RAM and I want to add font family. So I'm going to add font family lobster and I want to add color white smoke. Just after that, I want to specify position relative. Now what I want, I want to create here a dash. So I'm going to select the follow class and create after content and create here a content so i'm going to just say here content specify the empty string and specify position absolute left property is going to be 14 percent and width is going to be 50 pixel i want to specify here a border so i'm going to say here border one pixel solid white smoke so as you can see you have this dash here and i want to specify border radius for rem and i want to add here margin top 0.5 rem like this now just after that i'm going to select the follow class again and to the first icon to the first child to this F icon to the first icon to this Facebook icon I want to specify margin left for RAM and the last I want to specify font size to this follow section so I'm going to select this follow class and specify here font size 0.9 RAM save the changes and as you can see you have your follow text here so now the first column is ready now let's move on to the next column right here. In the second column, I have here a sign up button on the right side of the panel. Then I have here a title and these two text boxes with the login button. And as you can see here, you also have your email and the password icon to these text boxes. Now let's see how to create this second column. So I'm going to open my index.html file and in this file, I'm going to write some code in my second column right here now in the second column i'm going to first specify a custom class to this column so i'm going to say here login and in this column i'm going to first create a button so i'm going to say here button specify the type of button so i'm going to say here type button i want to specify class btn btn sign up we are going to create this class in the style.css file now just specify text here so I'm gonna say here sign up save the changes it's going to add this button right here in the second column now just after this button I'm gonna create here a form I don't want this action attribute so I'm gonna get rid of this action attribute and in this form I have here a division tag with the class titles and in this titles class I'm gonna have your h6 heading tag with the text we keep everything and in the h3 heading tag I'm gonna say ready to login save the changes and you can see you have this text here now just after this div I'm gonna create another div with the class form group and in this form group, I'm going to have here an input tag, type text, and I want to specify a placeholder email for the first text box. Then I'm going to specify here a class form input. Just after that, in this division tag, I'm going to create another div with the class input icon. To add this icon in the text box 
So I'm going to just add here in this division tag an icon and specify a class to import icon in this login page like this. So I'm going to add here user lock icon in this login page like this. Now just after that I want to just copy this form tag paste it here to create my second input text box and just change this placeholder to password and this text became password and I'm going to just change this icon to just the user instead of specifying user lock. Save the changes and as you can see you have two text boxes with two different icons. Just after this form group div I'm going to create a button here and specify first type of button. So this is the submit button and to this submit button I'm going to specify a class btn btn login and I'm going to specify text here login save the changes this is going to add here a button submit button with the text login now let's add some styling to this second column and make them like this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just open my style.css file and in this file I'm going to select these classes so I'm going to just add here a command first and just say second column login now in the style.css file right here i'm going to just first select btn class which we already specified to this sign up and this login button you can see here right now now in the btn class i'm going to support i'm going to first specify the padding 0.5 ram and 1.5 ram just after that i'm going to say here border none and border radius is going to be 4 ram just after that i'm going to specify the background color the default background color to these buttons so i'm going to just specify here a default background color and i want to specify a color white smoke the text color and font size is going to be 0.7 rem just after that I'm going to specify font family and specify box shadow property and I want to call the variable primary shadow and the last I want to specify a cursor pointer I'm going to select both button at the same time so I'm going to first select the login CSS class then say here btn sign up just after that, I'm going to select the form and then select the BTN login. I'm going to select both these buttons at the same time and specify a background color. And I want to call primary gradient color to these buttons. So this will add some gradient color to this button. I want to add here a float property to the right side. So I'm going to say here right and margin 1 rem save the changes now just after that i'm going to select this title class so i'm going to say here titles and add margin bottom 2.2 rem and then select the form and specify here height 55 percent max height 280 pixel I want to add here margin top 5.5 rem so this will add some margin between these titles and these text boxes now just after that I'm going to select the form tag with this h3 heading tag so I'm going to say here h3 as well as I'm going to select the form tag again and select this h6 heading tag so I'm going to say here h6 heading tag and I want to specify first font family so I'm going to select the font family then I'm going to specify padding 0 and I'm going to specify margin 0 I want to specify padding left so I'm going to say here padding left 3 rem this will add some padding to these titles and just after that I'm going to select the form h6 heading tag this one and I want to center this h6 heading tag so I'm going to say here padding left 
4.5 RAM. But I want to change the font family. On this, it's a sixth heading tag. So I'm going to say here font family, lobster, and color is something like this. All right now, just after that, I'm going to select the form group class of this text box. So I'm going to select the form and select form group. So I'm going to select this form group class of this text box. And to this class, I want to add text align left. Then I'm going to specify border one pixel solid. I'm going to call the variable border color. Just after that, I'm going to specify margin top 0.9 rem and margin right 2 rem. I also want to add border radius, so I'm going to say here a border radius 3 rem. Just going to add a border radius to this division tag, and just after that, right here, I'm going to select form input class. So I'm going to select first form, form group and select my form input class and to this class I'm going to first specify padding 0.5 RAM and 1 RAM then I want to specify background transparent and I'm going to specify border none I'm going to remove this border from this text boxes and just after that I want to specify font family and font size 0.9 rem. I'm gonna say here overflow header. Now, when we focus on the input tags, you can see this type of outline to this input tags. So I'm gonna remove it. So I'm gonna just say here form, form input, and for the focus event, I want to specify outline none. Save the changes. So as you can see. So when you focus on this input tag, it's not going to add the outline. Now just after that, to these icons, I'm going to specify some style. So I'm going to first select the form tag and select input icon. So as you can see here, I already specified this input icon class right here. I'm going to select this division tag and just specify display property in line and then specify here a color. And I want to specify border color to this text. So I'm going to say here border color. This will add the light color to this icon. And at the last, I want to add some padding to this button. So I'm going to just see here form, btn login. And just specify float property, none. And I want to add padding 0.8 rem and 5 rem. And the last, I'm going to specify margin left 2 rem. Save the changes and as you can see, the login page is ready. As simple as that. And now, if you want, you can add validation to this email address and to this password as well as you can create your own sign up page as well. That's upon you. Now that's it. If you have any question, you can ask me anytime in the comment section. Like this video if you find anything useful. Subscribe to this channel for more latest videos. And that is all for now. I will see you in the next tutorial.